going down on me. <laughs> I reached my hand down. I rubbed the top of his bowling ball shaped head, because I've seen people do that in the movies. <laughs> He comes up and he looks me in the eyes and he says, do you know how powerful you are? Oh. <laughs> A memory pops up. I'm in the back seat of the Buick. Grandpa's in the driver's seat. Grams is in the passenger seat. We're moving at a glacial pace. The boat starts to turn to the right into the parking lot. I turn my head out the window and I see the sign, North Hudson OBGYN. I'm 16 years old and I haven't yet menstruated. I march my way into the exam room to hear my fate. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, 70% chance you're infertile. You'll be on the pill for the rest of your life until you wanna have kids, because of course you're gonna wanna have kids at some point, right? And at that point you can come back and we'll put you on IVF. See all the babies we made? <laughs> I take the prescription pad, I say thank you, and I walk back to the car, and Grams is like, so how did it go, honey? And I'm like, good. <laughs> and I put that prescription in my pocket, and I keep quiet the whole way home. And a few things emerged in that moment, right? One is that my body's broken. Two, there's an outside authority that's gonna tell me how to fix it. And three, it's better to stay quiet about it. So he's still looking at me, waiting a response. And I'm like, do I know how much power I have? And I say, no. Because the truth is, back then, I wasn't able to have orgasms. I wasn't menstruating naturally. And I really didn't feel powerful. All of my 20s, I feel like we're this journey of trying to discover what this hidden power was. Where did it live? How do I find it? Would a guy with a bowling ball shaped head be the one to help me? <laughs> Probably not, because there are many bowling balls that roll down this lane, and let me tell you, more often than not, I left feeling more disempowered, unfortunately. <laughs> so, disempowered. Well, what is that? That rings a bell. Oh yeah, all those years that I spent in the ballet studio as a teenager, as a growing, supposed to be menstruating teenager, but not, forcing my body to be thinner, to be better, to fit the technique, to meet the approval of the often male teacher that was at the front of the room, to force myself, push myself, even when it hurt, even when I felt broken. And why was I a woman in her 20s and still not getting a period? What's up with that? I started to really go in that direction and find out. I hired a holistic health coach. I got off the pill. I changed my diet. I did acupuncture. I took supplements. I did NAET, which is a muscle testing type of thing. I tried all the things you can imagine. I became a holistic health coach myself. I helped other women get their periods. <laughs> it was great. I love it. And still, month after month went by, nothing. Until one random morning, after a year and a half, I woke up and there was the blood. <laughs> I bought myself a red rose that day. And something, something popped up. Huh, maybe my body can function on its own. Maybe I'm not at the mercy of that fate that that doctor told me years ago. So with a few years of menstrual cycles in my, in my history now, something else emerged. I started to dance again, but this time in a different way. This time it was alone in my room when no one was watching, when it was me and my body and my feelings and the music and space to just be, to be silly, to be sexy, to be serious, to be PMSing. And as I danced, I also, I started making dance videos. I, just, I would just, you know, play you sexy thing and like get my teddy bear out and be like alone in my room dancing with my teddy bear. I swear it's still on YouTube. And, <laughs> and, and it was just so fun. And I, I found my creative voice again, you know? 
And another thing hit me. Oh, maybe I'm not broken. Maybe I'm just a creative vessel that had been stagnant and holding herself back for way too long. So more recently, about a year ago, I'm 35. I have plenty of menstrual cycles and dance videos behind me, right? <laughs> and I'm sitting at a diner with a new guy friend across the booth. And uh, I'm like, I ordered donuts. And I'm like, oh, these donuts are so good. My PMS is so bad right now. And I look over. And he's cringing. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Does talking about my period gross you out? And he's like, well, if I told you my penis bled every month, wouldn't that gross you out? And I said, no. <laughs> because yes, I do get my period every month, and I'm not going to stay quiet about it. <laughs> and I thought about that 16-year-old girl in the back seat with a prescription in her hand not wanting to talk to her grandparents about it. I thought about the 20-something-year-old girl and all the bowling balls that I had stayed silent with. And I felt the blood rise up within me as I grabbed the donut off my plate with my bare hands, showed it to him, and I said, I'm going to show you what the period is really about. And then I proceeded to give him a visual diagram of the four phases of the menstrual cycle using my half-eaten donut as a prop. <laughs> True story. <laughs> but this was not enough, because this was one man in one diner, and it was only one donut, unfortunately. <laughs> and I thought about, why is it so taboo to talk about our periods? Why do we keep silent about it? And uh, being the, the dancer that I am, I was, I was in the studio, and I was like, huh, I've never done this before. What would it be like to create a dance? that takes you through the four phases of the menstrual cycle. So I created one, and I, I brought it to an open mic. And what do you know, someone in that audience worked at the Society for Menstrual Cycle Research, and six months later, I'm at an academic conference presenting Hungry Ovaries, <laughs> my dance of the menstrual cycle, OK? So um, yeah. I don't have the time to share the full dance with you right now. <laughs> But what I would like to do is just take you through a quick taste of it, if you will, a little peek into the, the menstrual cycle. Would you stand up and join me? Yes. OK. Excellent. So we're going to pretend we just finished bleeding. <laughs> this is the beginning of the follicular phase. So place your fists on wherever your ovaries might live if you have them. Not all of us do. And the follicular phase is growth. So we're going to start growing the ovaries. So just start, yeah, like, yeah, like this, if you can't see me in the back. Yeah, so we're just we're, we're letting them grow, right? Estrogen is rising. So let me see that. Let me see those follicles on the ovaries starting to rise. <laughs> yes, yes. You become more attractive now, right? You're calling in what you need. You got to be careful, though, because you never know what you might attract. <laughs> this energy hits a crescendo, which is leading to ovulation. Do you know what ovulation means? Pause. The bowling lanes are now open. <laughs> OK? So let me see your sexy dance. Let me see you move those hips around. Yes, uh-huh. There we go. Work it. Excellent. This is the most dangerous phase, but luckily it's the shortest, right? Because any moment, one of these eggs is going to drop. So on the count of three, we're going to drop those eggs. Give me a one. Give me a two. Give me a three. Drop. You know what's next? The luteal phase. The luteal phase, a.k.a. PMS, a.k.a. why I got those donuts, we're going to release. We're going to stomp our feet and shake it out. Start a little bit slow, right? Because it starts very gently. It's like, ha, oh, ha, 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 ha. It sucks to take the subway right now. Yes, everything sucks right now. But you know what? It's going to get worse. Ha, ha. Let me hear you vocalize a little bit. Yeah. Get that energy out. Excellent. And you know why we're still going? Because this phase is two weeks long. <laughs> so let me see your best fetal position, aka Martha gramming our periods right now. We are contracting, we are breathing, we are releasing, we are making space to just be, possibly to journal, if you're like me. And 
Let's take that back into hands on where your ovaries might be, eyes closed, checking in with your body. I'm not going to make you repeat the cycle again, although we could. <laughs> and just notice inside of you right now, how do you feel? What's going on in there? What shifted? And you can have a seat. <laughs> Feeling good? Was that fun? Okay. So I can imagine that, like me, many of you at some point have been made to feel like your body's broken. You've been taught to stay silent about it. You've been told by someone else what you should or shouldn't do. And for you, for us, I just want to leave you with a few thoughts. One is that your body is not broken, it's just a creative vessel that's meant to move and express in whatever way is authentic to you. Two, whatever someone else says about your body does not have to be the truth. You get to call the shots. And three, you don't have to stay silent about it. You also don't have to make a dance about it. <laughs> but talking to even just one person, right? Because maybe the not staying silent is how we find the power. So the next time someone's going down on you, I want you to grab them by the ears, lift up their head, look them in the eyes, and say, do you know how much power I have? 